one of the major differences between prokaryotic DNA and eukaryotic DNA is that eukaryotic DNA consists of introns and axons, while prokaryotic DNA only contains axons. Remember, an intron is a segment on that DNA that does not code for any useful protein. Now, what happens inside eukaryotic cells is when transcription takes place, we form a pre-mRNA molecule that contains introns and axons. But then what happens inside the eukaryotic cell is we have a process that takes place that removes those introns from the mRNA to form an mRNA molecule that only consists of the axons. And this is a fully functional mRNA molecule that can now be used to form proteins. So if we are to use bacterial cells to form different types of eukaryotic proteins from eukaryotic genes, we have to first remove these introns from the genes of those eukaryotic DNA molecules. So once again, eukaryotic genes contain non-coding segments called introns. And when eukaryotic genes are transcribed, the pre-mRNA uh, pre molecule that is formed contains those intron segments. What happens inside the eukaryotic cells is these intron segments are removed because the eukaryotic cells contain the proper proteins and the proper machinery inside the cell to actually carry out the process. But this does not exist inside prokaryotic cells such as bacterial cells and this is a problem because if we take a eukaryotic gene. So let's suppose this is eukaryotic DNA molecule and this colored portion is the gene within that eukaryotic DNA molecule that codes for some particular protein. The question is, can we take this eukaryotic DNA, place it inside that prokaryotic bacterial cell in this form and expect that bacterial cell to be able to actually form any useful protein from this particular DNA? And the answer is no. And that's because once we take this molecule and place it inside that bacterial cell, we have these intron sections shown in orange and these exon sections shown in blue. And when this is found inside that bacterial cell, the bacterial cell will be able to use special types of proteins to transcribe the DNA into this pre-mRNA, but it will not be able to, to take out these RNA sections, these intron sections from this mRNA. And so, because it's only these blue sections that are necessary to form that particular protein and because the bacterial cell has no way of removing these orange sections and splicing together the blue sections, that bacterial cell will not be able to form any useful protein. Now, the question is, can we somehow fix this problem? Can we somehow create a eukaryotic gene that does not contain these intron sections, these intron sections here? Because if we can somehow create a eukaryotic gene, if we somehow can take this eukaryotic DNA and remove these introns, just simply splice together the blue sections, then we'll form a gene that doesn't contain these useless intron sections. And then we take that gene, place it into that bacterial cell, and that bacterial cell won't have to worry about removing these introns. And so it can easily form that eukaryotic protein. So this is called building a complementary DNA library. So a complementary, so cDNA library, is a library that consists of eukaryotic genes in which we have removed all these different introns. So to see how we can build a cDNA library, let's take a look at the following five, step, uh, five steps. So 
Let's suppose we take this same eukaryotic DNA molecule that contains these introns and these exons. So this is our DNA library shown here. So we have these introns, we have the exons, and this is our gene, the eukaryotic gene. So the first step is to allow that eukaryotic cell to transcribe this DNA molecule into the single-stranded pre-mRNA molecule, and pre simply means it has not yet been processed by that eukaryotic cell. Now, instead of taking out the pre-mRNA molecule, let's keep the pre-mRNA pre molecule inside that eukaryotic cell. And what that means is this eukaryotic cell will use the pre-mRNA molecule and because it is a eukaryotic cell, it has the proper machinery to remove these introns and basically combine these exons. So we basically take the pre-mRNA, we remove these orange sections, we modify the, uh, the mRNA in other, uh, in other ways. For example, we add a poly A tail, and then we finalize and we form that fully processed mRNA molecule that only consists of these exon sections and not of these intron sections. Now, once we form the fully processed mRNA molecule that no longer contains those intron sections, we now take and mix it with a special enzyme known as reverse transcriptase. Now, what reverse transcriptase does is it uses the MR mRNA molecule to form the DNA molecule. And so, we take this mRNA, mix it with reverse transcriptase, and we form a DNA molecule that is complementary to that mRNA molecule that has been fully processed and which no longer contains those introns. And because this DNA is complementary to the mRNA, this complementary DNA will no longer contain these orange sections, these intron sections. It will only contain the sequence of nucleotides that corresponds to these exon sections. So now we heat this double-stranded molecule and we separate the mRNA and the, D uh, the DNA. Remember, this DNA is complementary to this mRNA. And so if we take this DNA molecule and we place it inside a eukaryotic cell, it will be able to use this complementary DNA molecule to synthesize the proteins because it won't have to worry about those introns because those introns were removed in this process inside the eukaryotic cell. Now, because single-stranded DNA molecules are less stable than double-stranded DNA molecules, what we have to do is we have to take the single-stranded DNA molecule, mix it with DNA polymerase to form the more stable double-stranded complementary DNA molecule. Now, this process is done with a single eukaryotic gene, but we can carry out with many different types of genes within that eukaryotic organism. And so at the end, what we end up producing is this library of genes for that particular eukaryotic organism. And inside every single uh, gene, every single DNA molecule, we essentially removed all these, uh, all these introns and only kept the exons. And now if we take any one of the genes within the cDNA library and place it inside the eukaryotic bacterial cell, that bacterial cell will easily be able to take that DNA molecule, the gene, create the mRNA molecule that is already fully processed because the complementary DNA molecule is complementary to that fully processed mRNA molecule. And now, by using that fully processed mRNA molecule, because there are no introns, that bacterial cell can easily create the protein of interest, the eukaryotic protein of interest that corresponds to that particular gene that came from that cDNA library.